Hello, you lovely lot, and welcome back to Who Knew, a Doctor Who podcast. I am your host, as always, Josh Carr, and it's time for another episode. And as you know, every single episode, I bring you a wonderful guest from the world of Doctor Who, uh, and we have a little chat about the show uh, and what it means to people. Um, Today is slightly different because I've not got one guest, I've got two um, for for a little bit of a change, um, and two great guests, may I add. Um, so, first, let me introduce the writer of the 1996 TV movie and co-director and star of the upcoming documentary, Doctor Who Am I? It's Matthew Jacobs. Um, and, <laughs> and we've Hi. also got... The the co-director of the documentary alongside Matthew, Vanessa Yule. Um, so welcome both of you to the podcast. It is it is absolutely lovely to have you both. Well, thanks for inviting us. Thank yes, um, we've got a lot to get through because um, you, you've both been very busy. It, it's safe to say. Um, but what I like to usually do is take things right back to the very beginning. So uh, Matthew, we'll we'll start with you. Um, as as we sort of learn in the, the documentary, you, you have um, quite a strange relationship with Doctor Who growing up, because obviously your, your father was in The Gunfighters, which was a William Hartnell story, and you, you document in the documentary, uh, as people do in documentaries, um, that you visited the set while it was recording. Um, is, that, is that your earliest memory of Doctor Who, or do you remember watching the show beforehand, or...? It's a good question. I mean, we're talking about when I was 10 years old, when I went to Mm -hmm. visit the gunfighters with Dad in 66. And obviously the Doctor had been around prior to that. Um, But as you'll see in in the um, documentary, when people go see it, um, around that time in my life was a very turbulent era. So I don't Mm -hmm. really have much of a memory um, of that. I have memory after around the around the 66 i have i do have a memory i think my earliest memory of watching doctor who is coming back from the saturday grocery shopping with my stepmother dilly and we got back and we had a small black and white television and we started watching it and the daleks came on and we did that thing of hiding behind the sofa my brother and I, and it's a memory, whether or not it's fictional, but it's definitely a memory that when the dialects uh, fired and exterminated people, our television had steam coming out of the back of it and was exploding. (laughs) And indeed our TV collapsed um, because of the dialects. And I have, that's a memory that I have. I would have to get verification on that memory from my brother, but he was little, very little at the time. So I don't know. Yeah. I do I do remember watching it separately. Yeah, well that's a that's a wonderful memory. A wonderful yeah. memory that, that the Daleks destroyed your TV. <laughs> they um, did. And, and and after that point, were you were, were you like an, an active viewer of the show? Um before obviously the the, the, the I followed it with Patrick. 90s. I really followed it with, I think a bit with Patrick Trout and um, mm-hmm. And I really enjoyed that. And obviously, you know, around the time my dad was involved, I followed it a lot. Um, but then later on, um, you know, I went on to uh, watching other stuff. And I, I and and so when I came, I came to write it, I I really, it really was revisiting it for me. It wasn't mm-hmm. like I was a hard and fast fan. Um, yeah. But uh, but I obviously it's in my blood. Yeah. And uh, and when the 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 TV movie was obviously being being mooted. I think it's well documented that throughout the nineties it was on and off. There was rumors of various different projects, Spielberg and all of these things. When did you sort of sign on to the project, as it were? Um, well, I was approached in in the spring of ninety six. Um, I think it was the spring. Yes, it was the spring. It was, it was very. It was actually all quite quick. So I'd been working on other projects, um, for, both for Disney and for Paramount, um, on Young Indy and, and uh, what became Empress New Groove, and also Lassie for Paramount. And mm. so they knew of me. And obviously, um, when I met with, with Philip, he 
he responded very positively to the fact that it was kind of in my blood. And and uh, I did the pitch and the whole thing happened quite quickly within a matter of months. So basically I came on board at the beginning of 96 and I was so excited, I can't tell you. Yeah, yeah. And um, obviously it was, it was a very big change for Doctor Who um, launching it like a, a, a bigger, well, slightly bigger budget version in in America, Much bigger, and yeah, yeah and, and trying to trying to launch a series in America. Um, but Vanessa, I'm I'm intrigued as someone. I believe uh, are you um, did you grow up in America as well? Though I, I just wanted yes, to ask. Yes, uh, I grew up in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, which is in the middle. It's near Chicago. Mm-hmm. And, um, but I, we did have Doctor Who growing up. I right, mean, okay. vague memories of it because it was on public broadcast here in the mm-hmm. 80s. So I remember Tom Baker um, as the guy with crazy hair and the big scarf <laughs> and, I, and the Daleks. I was like, is that a plunger? But you know, <laughs> I, thought, <laughs> I, I, I thought it was great and it was scary. And I'm like, oh, he's going on this, this, this phone booth that's bigger on the inside um i i mean i thought it was a lot of fun and and memories of watching it with my family or my dad was the one who found it because he loved science fiction and just thought this this wacky british science fiction show would be would be a great watch we did we loved it yeah and do you do you remember the tv movie being being a thing do you remember do you remember it at all no, I did not no. know about the TV movie. Sorry, Matt. Uh, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know about it until like years later after we'd been, you know, friends and I had worked on a couple of Matthew's previous features and it just sort of came out in a conversation. And I was like, there was a TV movie? Like, it's just weird that there is only that movie. And I think Matthew had to explain it to me several times. No, he was only on TV once. Yeah, um, yeah, it's a it's a very strange history, Doctor Who, and like the the fans know it back to front. But I, I I do find that often when you're explaining it to someone who's not a hardcore Doctor Who fan, there is a bit of intrigue, and like people are like, oh, I didn't know anything about that. Um, like when you when you mentioned missing episodes to someone, the fact that they just deleted and just burnt a load of episodes is is fascinating. Um. And yeah, that, I, I I love that that element of Doctor Who, which um, and obviously the 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 intensity of the fan community will will get into a little bit later when we when we talk about the documentary. Um, I was also intrigued about how how you two came to become a, uh, a sort of a duo and a, a team working together. Um, how, how did your your working relationship begin? I'm gonna take it away, Matt. Okay. <laughs> you start. Yeah, you this start. is this is for either of you. This is for this is for whoever can remember. So, well, it was uh, years ago, actually, uh, when I was uh, getting my uh, master's. Matthew was one of my uh, uh, teachers, my professors. So um, he taught me screenwriting, um, like my first directing class or whatever. But I was working on a documentary at the time, um, a short doc, my thesis. And so we kind of had been talking about that and my, and so it was just through that relationship that then I kind of got invited to work on one of Matthew's first features, Your Good Friend. And in it, it's a, I'm a documentarian along with my, uh, the, the DP who was also the DP in my short it became like a collaboration very, you take it very away, very <laughs> very matter i mean here was the thing was um it was i think it was my first year teaching at academy of art university in san francisco and uh and i think vanessa was in one of my first first classes so and we just we we got we, we share a sense of humor i think that's the main oh. thing that 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 sort of exists between us that makes us a duo is that we all, we find that we I often find that we laugh at the same things um, and and we we can have arguments and come back from them do you know what I mean not many people can do that um, and so that's that's the nature of a good working relationship where you can be honest with each other um, and get through things and I recognized that quite early on actually because I was 
I'd come back from making a movie called Boxing Day with, with Bernard Rose, which I was starring in with Danny Houston. And it had got to Venice, it had done really, it did really well. And I was so inspired that I thought, I thought I can make a film, you know, just on the cost that it, it the same amount of money it takes to go on a vacation. Um, and, and so the plot really meant that everything had to be very meta. So, so it meant that if we had a, a DP, the DP was in the film, but was actually shooting the film. Vanessa was playing the assistant director of the, it was called a mocky documentary, mocky docudrama, that's what I call it. Um, so it was about some people making a film about an idea that they've had that's absolutely awesome. You know, a, a clergy approved porn site. It's about a rabbi and a, and a rabbi and a, uh, and a washed up pornographer. I play the washed up pornographer. A real rabbi plays the rabbi, and he's and he was fantastic. And we just, I'd I, I'd been meeting with Larry, and uh, like like a couple of stoners. You know, we'll make a band. We'll do a band. And it was like we'll do it. And I thought I'm at a film school. I'm at a film school. Everybody here's got their own little camera and things like that. So I'm going to go out and get there. Dylan's got his camera. Ah, there's Vanessa. Ah, they're the brilliant duo. So they're in the movie and pay them a little bit, a little bit, really a small <laughs> amount of money um, because we, we really, we did it. but for them it was great because they were experiencing um, us, me shooting a feature in basically seven days, six days, six or seven days. We, wow. and of course we were all too stupid to know better. Um, we just went, went for it. And we, so that in my mind is where our friendship started making that movie. Um, and that was good. And then I did another movie called um, Bar America, by which time Vanessa had left, had got her master's. She was down in LA. She was working on commercials. She was doing this, <laughs> doing that, doing that. So now I had to pay her. Um, and, <laughs> and she came up and she worked on Bar America, which is a great little film. You can see, you can see your good friend on, on Tubi. But Bar America, we can't see anywhere. Anyway, we had a fabulous time on that. And then after Bar America, which is a good film, it won audience awards. After that, which she co-produced, um, uh, our, our friendship was pretty much sort of locked in. So when she came up to San Francisco sometime, short, you know, uh, sometime after, about a year or two after we'd done that film, and it was 2015, I was being, I, they'd started inviting me to, um, or 2014, they'd started inviting me to um, conventions. Um, and, and then, and then, and I, and I said, oh, I don't want to go. We were literally uh, just yeah. meeting up, like it was a catch for up. Coffee. Catching up yeah. for yeah. coffee. And he just mentions it in passing about being invited to Doctor Who conventions and, uh, Florida somewhere and I'm just like what are you talking about <laughs> she didn't know like I that... she didn't know I'd even written the show well, you never you never oh, really? talked about it he never uh, talked about Doctor Who until really? then you never yeah. talked about it I wasn't ashamed of it I just thought everybody knew because I was that big-headed <laughs> Oh, yeah, I suppose I could have it. looked at I could have looked at your IMDb or whatever. It was there, <laughs> but I was just sort of like, wait, it didn't really sink in. But so no one that gets it. that far because on the IMDb you read the feature credits, and to get to to get to the Doctor Who credit, you have to go down into the TV credits, which is further down the, the list. Yeah, technically it's it's in the TV, isn't it? It's not, it's not yeah. in the movie, is it? Yeah. It um, is. Um, but I want, uh, one thing, though, about your good friend, it, it, we've joked that this documentary is an extension of that very first movie true. we did together because it is sort of so, meta and you see mm -hmm. behind the scenes because in the documentary, you know, we're making a documentary. It's like you yeah. see the boom go into the shot so many times. We're like, it could be a drinking game. How many times do you see the boom in the shot? <laughs> We'll just embrace it. You can even yeah. see the little fuzz at the top of the screen or just like, oh, man. But, Absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah. Doctor Who Am I is not the sort of documentary where it's a very polished um, it's a bunch of interviews intercut with a very polished bunch of drone shots and, and uh, um, you know, and B-roll um, mm -hmm. or archive footage. 
It's not that movie. What you see in, in Doctor Who Am I, which is exciting, is you actually see a story taking place. So it's kind of like mm -hmm. a fiction film because you're following us making the film. Um, uh, and uh, and, and uh, hopefully it's entertaining because both mm -hmm. Vanessa and I are also, we're also actors and we also do, do lots of other stuff. And, and um, you know, and uh, it's well, been a well, joy making this. entertaining because it is a story. Matthew's a screenwriter. I learned mm -hmm. a lot about story and storytelling. Yeah. How do you do the three act structure? How do we create this character in the beginning? We set Matthew up as kind of, you know, he's sort of the, the, the villain in many ways because he's not a part of this family. But then it's slowly, you know, there's the midpoint and we go deeper mm -hmm. into his character. So by the end, when he kind of has his really uh, emotional and uh, realization, we're kind of, we've, we've tracked with him. We're, we, we understand how he's changed. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's entertaining because, it, you know, it, it is, it, it's a story. Yeah, yeah, it's you de like you definitely get that when when you're watching it. It's it it's so, uh, and I think Matthew, what you've said before about it not being polished, um, is very fitting for something that is related to Doctor Who because I think that's a <laughs> it's a it's a running theme throughout Doctor Who in that <laughs> it's never the best looking show. Um, <laughs> True. But, I didn't but realize that, Josh. You're so right. Fantastic. You're so yeah, right. It's, uh, it's so even so now we can say you. we did it deliberately to be like yeah. Doctor oh, yeah. Who. It was that's to channel the, Doctor the, Who. The plunger yeah. and the whisk on the you know the Dalek. I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. The plunger, the whisk. <laughs> and the boom mic that that's the holy trinity um so that 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 meeting in where, when you were obviously talking about when, when you met up and you were talking about the, these invitations to conventions is that where this this documentary really started do you think is that is yes. that the birth of it and yes. at, at what point did things yeah. start snowballing towards we could make we knew, this into a film i think we knew right away it was going to be called doctor who yeah. am i um, mm -hmm. uh, because that was the thing that initially excited me about about making it. We can call it Doctor Who Am I? Mm -hmm. And it can be, you know, we're, we're exploring the fandom. So, but yeah, I mean, no, it was Vanessa. Vanessa, would have, Vanessa had to drag me screaming to the conventions, <laughs> basically. He was like, yes, okay. Um, I don't know about this, but okay. I mean, it was sort of the meeting. This it was the meeting was um, under not the happiest circumstances because my father had passed away pretty recently. So we were catching up about that. I almost felt that Matthew agreed to do it in a way to uh, give me a project to latch on to, and it's and it did. It gave me something to focus on. Um, so he was just kind of like, yeah, okay, we'll do this. Um, sure. Uh, and then within two months, we were filming. <laughs> and I could throw myself into this. Yeah. Um, but then, of course, little did we know it would take us over seven years to get it out there. That was never yeah. the plan. Yeah, it it's, it's been a long time. It's been a it's long a, time. A, a massive amount of help from people like Daphne Ashbrook, who... Who you know, and then Sean Lyon, Sean Lyon, who's the showrunner of Gallifrey, he he reached out to me and said, "Come to a real convention." And that was when we really started, because I said, "Yeah, I'll come." Have a couple of rooms for my crew, and then talking to Daphne. Daphne saying, "Oh, you should meet Malachi. You should meet Bob Mitch. You should meet Kev. You should meet." Oh, I'm going, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fine, that's great." Um, and then we go along, and so we did that trip, and then we did bunch of shooting in the summer and then we did another trip out to Long Island who which is run by Ken Deep and mm -hmm. and that was fantastic there were there were so many people there and we and so basically it's those two conventions that we, we yeah. film at um, and you really get a sense from those two conventions of what the American fandom is like how joyous they are how much they celebrate how much mm -hmm. they dress up how you know so, so hopefully it's of interest to British fans. I think it yes, it it really is. As as someone who's part of very much in the enclosed British side of of the Doctor Who fandom, which is a joyous and miserable place at times, <laughs> um, uh, especially especially the online community. I think it's yeah. it's it's famously. Um, 
very loving and very welcoming and incredibly toxic at the same time. Um, yeah. So it, it, you get the best of both worlds. Obviously, the, the toxic is the minority, which is is nice. Um, it's just sometimes they shout louder, which I think is very I true in, in, in a, lot of, a lot of things in the world. What are conventions like in the UK? Is it, you know, do you have your cosplay? Do you have your... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I've I'm quite new. I mean, my, I've had some quite strange convention experiences. I I did one convention a few years ago where I met a lot of doctors, but I didn't do a lot of milling about, and I didn't really speak to anybody, and I didn't really, I wasn't really an active participant in the fandom at that point. I was just there to go and meet Tom Baker and Peter Davison and, and meet everybody, and then have a look at their little stalls and and head off um but then my only other convention experience is when i went as a host um but i i think they're they're wonderful um and uh, the, the british conventions are that i think someone does someone does say that, that in in the documentary that they went to a british convention and everyone was in their normal clothes which is me because i'm i'm I cannot cosplay to to save my life. I I couldn't afford that. Um, it's very it's a very expensive hobby. Um, yes. But it, it is still a, a lovely place, and you know you meet all of these people that you speak to online all the time, and you swap stories and you go and find some weird stuff on the stalls, and you see these celebrities in person. It's a it's a it's a great bit of fun. Um, but the I think the Americans, as they do with a lot of things take things to another level right. and it's it's a very it's much more enthusiastic is what what I got from the documentary um which is lovely and they they look very fun it's made me want to go to an American convention to be honest oh you should You'd yeah, be yeah. I, I would love to come I'd have to try I'll have to try and get to Gallifrey one at some point because I know Gallifrey a lot of people would go and they they love it um but yeah it's a long flight it's a long, yeah. long flight. It's a long, yeah, yeah. A um, lot of fun, though. Yeah, a lot of fun. So, in the in Matthew in the, in the documentary, um, you, you're very open uh, as well about your difficult relationship with Doctor Who, sort of in those in between years. It's like you said before, you you weren't ashamed of it, um, but I think it's safe to say you got the impression that it was more volatile towards you than maybe it was or maybe i mean i think at the time it was oh you mean was after volatile. the tv movie yeah after yeah. the tv movie your the, the reaction to you um and what what why you staved off conventions for so long um i wasn't invited you, know, you weren't involved <laughs> yeah, right that was, okay. the, that was the reason i mean <laughs> they they at the beginning at the beginning, I did get one invite to go on a cruise, and then they withdrew the invite. I think when they realised, right? Um, but but really, um, I wasn't invited. Um, and as conventions were happening, they didn't. It turned out Sean Sean Lyon was saying we didn't even know you were here. And conventions tend not to invite writers um, mm -hmm. so much. They they want the stars. They want people who people recognise. Um, so um, so I wasn't that invited. But yeah. The, the initial reaction to the TV movie was, uh, was quite vitriolic at times. And if you're a sensitive, wilting flower like myself, um, then, then, um, um, then you, 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 know, you pick up, you turn on, you go online and somebody says, worst movie ever, um, or something like that. As you were saying, yeah. they, can be a bit, they can be a bit mean online. Um, yeah. You start feeling damaged. And then when, when the press were going, nah, nah, it's no, this is no good. You can't have the Americans doing it. And uh, uh, I just felt, well, you know, uh, I'll move on. Um, uh, and, and to a degree, um, I didn't really want to revisit um, the, the world. But when I saw the night of the doctor um, mm -hmm. on the fiftieth, and I saw um, and I saw Paul being so great, and, and then I caught up with some of the big finish things, and you realise that Paul is both the shortest and the longest doctor, yeah. um, you know, because of his uh, his existence on big finish. He really has he has really made the doctor his own, 
and the different incarnations of the Doctor, the different incarnations of the Eighth Doctor that he's brought to life, are, are, are sort of really wonderful. So he, so so I, I started to feel tremendous admiration for the mm -hmm. fact that it really was the fans that have driven. It's not you know the BBC in the eighties wanted to say goodbye to the show, um, mm -hmm. uh, but it was the fans that drove the TV movie. It was the fans that drove Big Finish. Um, it was all of that, and that was all picked up by by you know RTD, and he he and he really brought it back wonderfully in two thousand five. Yeah. And Eccleston is this sort of synthesis of everything I think that Paul was doing, down to yeah. the leather coat. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And so mm -hmm. but Paul Paul really wanted to play it with short hair. He turned up in Vancouver with his hair yeah. cropped because he'd just done a military thing. Um, uh, and uh, so we, you know, but Siegel wanted the wig, so we <laughs> yeah, the wig, wig. yes, yeah. the famous wig. I, I've yeah, I have heard that story before. Do you think? Do you think the movie, as it was, would have would have still worked with a with a shaven head, Paul McGann? Or do you no, think it would have been a bit strange? It was all the wig. I, it was a hundred percent the wig. That's right. <laughs> it's it's the wig. Apparently, Gary Oldman says that when he gets a role or something like that, and his first response is, "Well, what what's the wig?" Because, um, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. but but so, yeah, it's all the wig. I think I think um, given the tone of the TV movie at the end of the day, it, which is tonally closer to a sort of um, 40s knockabout comedy at times, yeah. you know what I mean, with quick fire lines and a brilliant comedian performance, supporting performance from Daphne, um, who really brings out the Doctor in so many ways. Mm -hmm. um, that it, that the long hair is great. It's like he's yeah. got to, he's almost got to be a synthesis of all the previous Doctors. So the sequence where he's going through all the people all the different costumes and he's saying nah mm -hmm. the long scarf no to the gun you know <laughs> it's big stuff. it's very it's very um it's very sort of and that's philip seagull really you know philip is is, a, is such a lover of doctor who um mm -hmm. and i think so that romantic kind of uh, energy um i like i like the story um because we saw philip seagull this summer at BritCon in, in Seattle. Mm -hmm. And he, I, Matthew, you tell this great story of the American fans calling in to not. Oh, yeah. And it, and Philip said that actually happened. I don't know if they know about it. About oh, yes, interview. I wonder. Yeah, you have to. Imagine. So Universal were on an ran hot and cold on this. While Spielberg was attached, obviously, because he mm -hmm. was on the lot at Universal at that time, Ambling was there. Um, it was like, yes, sir, we will make Doctor Who. Um, and, but but once Spielberg disassociated himself from the project, um, which was when we decided to do the TV movie, basically, um, uh, Universal were, were kind of not wanting to do it. So, so it was a, there was this point where even though the script had been greenlit by Fox um, and the BBC, uh, Universal were debating whether or not to do it. And then Philip, very naughtily, at those days, um, uh, there were phone, there were phone war. It was pe people called in, people made phone calls to each other. Mm. It wasn't just emails. <laughs> and the, for the, 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 um, um, he got all the the two hundred and eighty thousand fans that were in U, the U.S. at that time. He said, "Let's jam their let's jam their board," and they did. They all called in. They all sent massive. Well, emails were around in those days. They they just completely flooded Universal. So Universal almost broke down. Um, uh, or Universal TV. Um, and yeah. Tom Thayer was furious. He was the head of the thing, and and. I'd always, I'd remembered it because I was in the in the middle of writing, you know, and I and, and I thought, myself, yeah, I've got two hundred fifty thousand people supporting me on this one. Um, <laughs> uh, this is I was, and I, I told that story to Vanessa, and then when we met with Philip this summer, you know, he said, "Oh no, that's true, that's true, that yeah, happened." Yeah, because nobody and, could so, agree. So Philip arranged remember, that. But he, yeah. he Philip arranged it. 
Wow. Like, yes, it happened. It happened. Oh yeah, it happened. We're like, oh, Matthew, you weren't you weren't just imagining this. <laughs> That's yes. incredible. So, so Phil, Philip Siegel basically decided to flood Universal and trick them into commissioning, well, basically saying yes to the TV movie. That's yeah, and it's absolutely not a hilarious. That no. Yeah. That's incredible. Like- that is absolutely yeah. incredible. What a story. So the American fans really came through and um, saved the love doctor the in that fans. instance. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah, we don't we talk about that in the documentary, so you've got an exclusive there, Josh. Well, I, I love it. I love the exclusive. Thank you for that. Um, I, did, I did have one question for you, Vanessa, because um, I, in, I was intrigued about this concept. If you now... Um, were in the position that Matthew was in the 90s and someone came to you and said would you want to write or direct a tv movie an American relaunch of Doctor Who um but you were doing it now would you say yes and what would you do with it do you think so wait am I in the 90s or am I now now (laughs) now that's a Let's, That's a really let, good question. Let's <laughs> let's say let's say the nineties because I think it's I think oh, it'd be funny to say what to say yes. I mean, yeah, you know, what you would do with it. Female with the director, 90s. of course, I would definitely say yes. Um, what would I do with it? That's that's uh, man, hard to say. But I you'd I be would perfect say, for it. Yeah, I mean, there also weren't that many. I mean, there were women directors in the '90s, mm-hmm. science fiction. Oh yes, I would be a pioneer. I would go out there and and do it, of course. Yeah, and I, I, I assume think that... that I actually think that um, Grace Holloway is just a great character, simply because she's, she's so strong. She is the modern woman. She tells him no at the end. I mean, I would hire Matthew to do the writing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you yes, don't have to do the, that. In this alternate gym. reality, um, uh, <laughs> I'd be. Just I'd get be, into the TARDIS and go back. In we time? just did. We swap personalities in this alternate reality. I would be studying, um, you know, astronomy um, <laughs> at Bernard College, and I would be. Um, I would be in your shoes. You know what I mean? Right. I'd be Matthew Yule. <laughs> Vanessa Jacobs. Vanessa Jacobs, <laughs> director of the TV movie. I love it. Um, well, I mean, we're we're gonna we're gonna move on over to one of our our, our features now. Um, it, it's one of my favourite parts of the show, um, and we're gonna see what Matthew and Vanessa want to put in the DVD collection. Grayskull. The Unicorn and the Wasp or Love and Monsters? Which one do you think I prefer? No, I mean, which one do you want to watch first? You are pulling my leg. The DVD collection, for anyone who doesn't know, is a collection of episodes, stories from, from the history of Doctor Who uh, that are submitted by my wonderful guests that, that mean something to them or may have some sort of sentimental value, might just be their favourite episode. I've actually had someone put in one of their least favourite episodes just because they thought they could talk about it for 10 minutes. Um, <laughs> so we've we've had a, a cacophony of, of strange and wonderful and some iffy episodes of Doctor Who in there. But um, we've now got two going in this week. So this is this is exciting. We've never really had this before. So, um, v- Vanessa, you, you go first. Uh, what, what would you like to put in the DVD collection? I, well... I would like to put the episode Rose into the DVD collection. At first, I was like, oh, maybe this is a bit obvious. But um, I, yeah, that very first episode that brought back the series, um, it really captivated me. I was, you know, I was, wasn't sure at first about these mannequins, but, you know, mm-hmm. I by the end of it, I was sucked into the show and... I came, I started watching it after we began filming. So I actually watched the TV movie first, I guess, as my gateway into the new Mm -hmm. Who. Um, And so as research, I was like, all right, I'll turn this on. And really that it just, 
being the first, it kickstarted my journey into watching the new Who. And I, I said before, we were filming this, it was research, but I was, was also, you know, that you go through grief or whatever, however you kind of go through when you lose a parent or whoever. Mm -hmm. And I was finding kind of comfort in this research of, you know, you know I knew at night I could go and dive into the, this character, follow him on these journeys. And every time he like had to regenerate or die, I was like, no, God. But then he started into in something new. And so it was just kind of like, it was very comforting. And there are a lot of episodes to go through. So there is a lot. Like, so it, it, it was sort of, not, it wasn't cathartic, but it was just something there to like, help me with this project it was fun research yeah. we'll put it that way yeah well uh, rose is is an episode that i i can't believe hasn't got been put in already because it's probably the most talked about episode on this podcast because it's so many people's first episode so it's usually the first thing that i talk about in a lot of these podcasts uh because it's my first episode and so many other people who've been guests on this show have said that that was my entry into doctor who um and it's 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 wonderful and it's i i was actually thinking um when i was watching the tv movie the other day as research for this which again very fun research um <laughs> was um I was thinking there's so much of this in series one. There's so much carryover from this. And it it really I feel like it 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 sort of takes the the groundwork that the TV movie set and then it carries on with it in the way that probably was the intention with the TV movie, which is is great. And I love Rose. I, I've seen it so many times, hundreds of times at this point. Um, every time I start a rewatch and then tail off, it's, I, I always get through that one at least. Um, so it's a great pick, and thank you for putting it in because it's a it's a it's a wonderful story, and it means that over half of Christopher Eccleston's episodes are now in the DVD collection. Wow, that's really good. It's insane. Um, yeah. Uh, when he's got 13 episodes and seven are in are in that's you know no, it's a sign of the quality really isn't it um, it's great <clears throat> i really it's... enjoyed his doctor and i was so bummed when he only did one season and i'm like i am invested in you now yeah. <sighs> yeah. but he's well, the rom romantic character with him and billy yeah it's just the like, great chemistry like, wasn't it between the two yeah. of them Wonderful. Uh, and, and I think that's, that's what you really need. I think that's the sort of foundation that one needs for Doctor Who is an incredible chemistry between the companions and the Doctor. And mm -hmm. I think that that goes right back to its its foundation, which was as a family show. You know, as a show for children, where where you know where you felt like this is this is somebody's weird uncle. And and these these people and they're a group. They, you know, they're a little gang. They're traveling together. It was the sixties. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And um, <laughs> sp speaking of the sixties, I have had a little sneak peek as to what what Matthew has has picked. Um, so so Matthew, what what would you like to submit to the DVD collection? I, I'd love to see in a DVD collection, and I'm sure they've actually done it. Is is the you know the gunfighters' story? Because when the gunfighters was done, they would tell those stories over like four half hours, and mm -hmm. and they and they each each half hour had a cliffhanger, um, a really good cliffhanger normally, and that yeah. was very compelling. And I, and that's something I would like to look at from time to time, not just because of my dad. Um, but also because it was an interesting um, phase. Um, Hartnell, um, were, they were using less of him because I suppose mm -hmm. he was having sort of early onset, you know, dementia. You know, uh, he was forgetting his lines constantly. They were having mm -hmm. problems with him, um, uh, and so so he arrives, and then he his identity gets mixed up with Doc Holliday, who's played by my dad. And so it was very much a it, it, it is, as we discussed earlier, a seminal thing for me, looking at that. And when I, when, as you see in the documentary, when I look at it, 
there's all it opens all sorts of doors i'm afraid of looking at that show um mm -hmm. because of the doors that it could open and then at the end of the day since making the documentary i've seen more and more parallels is you know the doctor comes to america both yeah. of them the doctor um pals up with doc holiday mm -hmm. and he pals up in mind with doc holloway not that far <laughs> removed yeah. um yeah. Uh, there's 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 all, all sorts of you know misdirects and the misdirections are are, are quite similar so yeah, mm. so I choose the gunfighters, um, but that's just because because I think it's nice for people to be reminded of where this show came from. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a lovely, it's such a fun story as well. But the the basis that I, I love the the fact that the inciting incident is the doctor basically hurts his tooth on a sweet, and that. Uh, creates this this ent this entire story um yeah which but, yeah. every every child would got their tooth broke on a boiled sweet americans don't know what boiled sweets are um <laughs> but um they're basically hard candy um and uh and so you break your teeth on a piece of hard candy and so children could identify with the doctor yeah yeah and um yeah, it's a, it's a wonderful story, and it's like you said in in the documentary. There's there's that um, wonderful moment. You're doing that that gunfighters panel, and you're watching the the clips from it. Um, there's a lovely shot of of you with with your dad in the background, um, and it's one of my favourite shots of the documentary. Um, and I, it was a lovely moment, and I I welled up uh, while you were oh. watching that while watching that. So it was <laughs> it was lovely because. Um, like I say, it just shows what 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 the show means to people, um, and uh, obviously, and another thing that um, so they're both in the in the DVD collection, both very very worthy, fantastic picks. Um, another thing that that obviously is explored very very deeply in the show is is the fandom, uh, the the fans of Doctor Who, and it's time for you to get well acquainted with them. Uh, specifically, the ones uh, for our next feature, Bloody Twitter. For God's sake! Bloody Twitter! Uh, this is a feature where our fans ask questions to our wonderful oh. guests. Um, don't worry, you're not you're not going to have to you know fight any fans or anything. The first question uh, is for Matthew from Reese at Reese Dell um, with a five and a three. You decide where they go. Um, he, he said, uh, was there anything that you had in the original screenplay that was unfortunately cut out of the script or in the edit that you would have loved to have seen it make it to screen? That's a good question, Reese. I mean, I think um, in the, in the uh, early drafts, there was more of Yi Ji. There was more of Chang Li, um, the Asian child. Um, he was that you understood more about him, he was more um, filled out as a character. And in a way, I do wish there had been more of that because one of the sort of, spoiler alert, one of the holes um, in, the, in the story is how does the master get into the TARDIS before um, Chang Li? How does he do that? Um, well, when, uh, you know, my answer is always, well, you just have to suspend your disbelief. It, listen, it's about a TARDIS. Um, where do you go from there? But, yeah. but really, if you were traveling with the cat, if you're traveling, how you get audiences to suspend disbelief is by drawing the characters beautifully so that the audience identifies with them. And then when they do something that's unbelievable, you believe it because you've gone with them. And I feel if there had been more Chang Li at the top of the movie, um, uh, he, he, we we wouldn't have that problem. Also, mm -hmm. he's a great actor, and and it was very much about you know, and and as a companion, he was a companion who who was a criminal. You know, he's a thief, mm -hmm. and he's got and he's got problems with his background and his and his dad, and you know, and up and, and the community that he's involved in. So that was an element that I wrote a lot about. I mm -hmm. also wrote more more. I had a whole narrative about the Millennium Star that kind of fed the, you know, so that we understand what the temporal orbit is. And once, mm -hmm. once, the, once that was taken out, um, 
uh, again, suspension of disbelief. You just have to have grace now. Going, temporal orbit? What's that? Uh, but you know what I mean? And then the, the audience knows. Nobody knows what that is. Uh, and yeah. that's okay. We're just going to keep moving forward. Um, yeah. um, but but I, obviously, I had it in a very fanish kind of way, explained with lots of lovely visuals, because I like to tell stories with pictures and yeah. let the dialogue be fun. Um, do you see what I mean? Mm. So if, if you can tell a story through action, however you do it, if you can physicalize the story, then mm -hmm. you're liberated to have fun with the dialogue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I know that some of that oh, I'm not. I, I've not finished it yet. I actually started it last week. Um, I know that uh, some of that is explored a little bit deeper in Gary Russell's target novelization. So if anyone wants to, yeah, to hear any of that. he was working off an earlier draft. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's um, uh, what I've read so far is, is wonderful. Um, so I, I would highly recommend that. Um, uh, Vanessa, a uh, question for you uh, from a, a loyal listener uh, at Oscar Groucho's. Um, He's asked, uh, what did you find was the emotional heart of the documentary for you? Well, our tagline is, you know, you know, fa uh, you know, finding family, family that's bigger on the inside, mm -hmm. um, emotional heart. I guess, you know, when you see the documentary, it's following Matthew's journey of kind of going from not being a fan to being a fan. Mm -hmm. And um, it's the unlikely places where you're you you have family and are accepted like this community of it's where I, yeah i'm speaking out loud i'm just trying to, <laughs> um, i guess it's uh yeah finding family yeah. you know if you if you're not um i think you know when you see it um people go to Fandom is a very personal thing and whatever it is that you're attaching to the doctor or attaching to whatever show you have, it's like something very personal comes from a place, could be childhood or wherever else. And that thing is yours. Um, mm -hmm. And for Matthew, it's his journey for finding what is that thing that makes him so tied and a fan of this show. And, you know, I think it's something that everybody can identify with. Um, and it's, it's so, yeah, that's what it is in a very roundabout way. I think I need more coffee. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 it was a, it was a wonderful answer. Wonderful, <laughs> wonderful answer. <laughs> um, the, <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, oh no, now we got the giggles. The next question is, is back to you, Matthew. Um, and this is sort of the inverse of the question that I asked Vanessa earlier, very cruelly. Um, so this is from Adam Hurd at Adam M. Hurd on Twitter. If you were making the film today, what would you do differently? And who, and I'm going to say from today, so if you were making it in 2022, yeah. um, and to be Paul McGann is off the table, Oh, okay. Who who would you cast as the Doctor in this new version oh, of my film? Oh, Adam, that's a horrible question. <laughs> because um, I'm going to get hauled over the coals with whatever I answer. Um, so, so, one, firstly, I wouldn't be, that they wouldn't come to me. They probably wouldn't come to me. Um, unless they wanted to do something. But in of this universe. Thing. In this they universe, have. they do. They have. They have. Um, I would return the show to its format of, of half hours with cling with cliffhangers um, mm -hmm. um, because I think that's a, a much uh, I think that's a fun format especially today when we look at great dramas that have been done within the half hour context recently here you have a show called the bear which I don't know if you've had that in the UK yet but it's wonderful um, mm -hmm. there's lots of there's lots of great half hours because people can watch a half hour through so I would I would do that. And in fact, in one of my projects that I'm developing, I am doing that. I'm going back to the half hour format with cliffhangers. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I think, so I would do that. The, the doctor, um, the joy of the doctor is really, it can be anybody um, uh, because and that's why I'm so excited about Shuti and I'm so excited. And I, and I actually like Jodie. I mean, a lot of people don't like her, but she takes it back to that, to that, 
to that uh, more char- it was more of a family show with her mm-hmm. so i think with me i would probably make it more family do you know what i mean i would probably yeah. have make it make it funnier i'd make the show funnier than it than it than it's been recently it takes i think uh, i i i love the show don't get me wrong every every incarnation of the doctor i enjoy I don't really have a favorite um mm-hmm. except my own um and then, <laughs> then 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 but and he's half human by the way um, yes. and, and he's so, so i would definitely that would happen um it would be found out that he is half human we'd meet his human mother um uh, or or we we there'd be a definitely the first the first season would be a story clearing that up it would be him going back and make it would be like back to the fucking future um he'd be going he'd be going back there making sure that he gets he get his mother gets laid by this time lord um so that so that he can exist i think that's what i'd do yeah i think i'd do it like that yeah I'm going to double down. The Twitterverse so, would go crazy. So <laughs> already in trouble. Your, your plan, <laughs> what your have plan I said? Is, <laughs> your plan is to make it more family friendly by making the doctor make sure his mum has sex with his dad. Yes. <laughs> yes. Perfect. If they can do that it's the, back it's to, the perfect conceit. <laughs> if they can do that in Back to the Future and it's a PG show. I think um, uh, we you can, or PG thirteen. Um, yeah. I th- I think I think Doctor Who could do that. So I think in half so, in thirty minute episodes. Yeah, four thirty yeah. minutes episodes. Yeah. Mom and Dad meet at high school <laughs> on Gallifrey. Um, uh, <laughs> and, you know, and, uh, it would be a synthesis of all that I enjoyed about you know Empress New Groove. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It would have it would have that kind of it might have that kind of tone. So yeah. I'd, it would be bolder, and that's why they would never come to me because the show takes itself too seriously these days. Yeah. <laughs> I say <Yeah>. it. <laughs> yeah. It does. It, I think it does, and I think it needs more of that. It definitely needs more of that. Um, I mean, with with concepts like that, I I have to ask a question. Would you would you ever consider writing for the show again if you were approached? Or of course if, I would. If, yes. Would you would you write for Big Finish? Of course I would. Yes, absolutely. Yes. I mean, I mean, we do. You saw in the documentary we interviewed Nick Briggs, uh, Nicholas Briggs, and um, mm-hmm. and and he, you know, obviously he's the Big Finish man. Um, mm-hmm. And and he says, you know, well, I, I realised the writer is standing right next to me when Vanessa's asking about what, what, what he thought of the TV movie. And he was very nice about it. I mean, the thing that he loved, he said, he said what he loved was, was the sort of 90s things where, where, you know, he was Genghis Khan, Genghis Khan. And then, the, you know, Jamie no goes, way. no way. And then, and then the master says, yes way. Um, and he, he would never do something like that. Do you know what I mean? They, he wouldn't, he wouldn't, but he liked it for what it was. So maybe there's a chance that Big Finish will let me lose on some of it. Listen, I don't know. I mean, we've made this documentary outside of the BBC. It wouldn't be what it is if we'd made it in the BBC. If the BBC had commissioned this and come on board, the documentary would have had to have been about the show. Mm-hmm. And the documentary isn't really about the show. It's the not, documentary no. is about is about the nature of fandom and me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, we, we've got one. I'll squeeze in one more question, just because it's a very good question from uh, Joshua Carpenter, uh, who's again a dear friend of the show uh, at Joshua CC two five two, and this is for both of you. So, uh, an, an answer each. Um, what if you could think of a moment from the show's history uh, that you would go back to and think that is the show that I love? What what moment springs to mind? Do you think in the, that moment that you love when you're watching it, like oh, that's genius. yeah, just that, just that something, you. It, yeah, oh. just something that caught you or something that it's like when, there is a, when you Matt think Smith about Doctor Who, moments, it does. I you know I was a big fan of Capaldi, yeah. um, and so with his last season was dark. So yeah. dark, and I was like, 
visually it was also colored, I think, very dark, but it was also just, I, I thought it was brilliant. And the fact that, can I do spoilers on here? You can do spoilers, right? Oh, so, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so the yeah fact why not? That Spoiler alert. Bob is the first Cyberman. I was just kind <laughs> yes. of like, it was just, so, I was like, oh man, that's genius and like yeah. so awful. Yeah. I, I, I think for me, that was the moment. I mean, it was, yeah, yeah. I, that whole season. Yeah. The way the ship was built and the that time is moving slower as they're, as they're oh, closer genius. to the like black hole. I, I just thought that was cool and going down the levels of the ship. I just thought that was great. I loved it. Genius. It, it's that, that's one of my favorite episodes. That's the one episode, that's the one story that I, I look at and I think if Doctor Who finished there, I reckon I, I could I would have I would have been at peace because it's yeah. such a good ending to the show. Like those last moments with Capaldi where he's lying and looking up and he's saying, I I, I thought there'd be stars. I was, I was like, oh that's yes. just oh, that's yes. beautiful, beautiful yes. moment. I think um, it was great. Yeah, he's yeah. amazing. Ma- Matthew, what, what springs to mind for you as a, as well, a moment? It, it's hard. I mean, certainly those moments that you were saying just now is that both, all of those moments are, are, are lovely. I like the, the, the moment where Matt Smith is trying to call um, Clara from his, from, from, through from the phone box. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and... Uh, and then he turns up at her door and she then just sort of thinks he's yeah. in that place and slams the door in his face. <laughs> um, I, I like that. I like, I love Capaldi's speech when he's, you know, his anti-war speech that's been used a lot. I loved it so much that I teach, a th- I taught, or I'm not doing it at the moment, but I was teaching acting for camera at, at the university and you choose little bits from things. And, uh, so we've got a very, uh, very good young uh, black actress, and, and she said, and "This was before they cast Jodie." Um, and I said, "Well, why don't you have a go at that speech where he's talking about um, about the nature of war?" Um, mm. And, and uh, so we we did it. We shot we shot that scene, and yeah. my admiration for for Peter Capaldi went through the roof at that mm-hmm. moment because it's not an easy speech to do. Um, uh, and it's not, that some of that writing is not easy. Um, for, and the doctors, when they pull that off, um, it's always a joy to watch. And I think Peter Capaldi was very good at pulling off these yeah. big emotional speeches. Um, you know, he brought a gravitas to the, to the show um, mm-hmm. that, that, that was just wonderful. So, mm-hmm. yeah, so, uh, so for me, it's kind of too... Those two, those two things out of the recent show. Those two things, um, yeah. The 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 sort of the sort of brilliant insanity of a lot of of Matt Smith's work, and and some of the incredible skill of Capaldi's work. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, of course, David Tennant's fantastic too. I mean, it's like yeah. they're all great. They're all they are great. all they're good, sort of, aren't they? Yeah, they, yeah. they really are. Yeah. Um, I mean, one thing that I can recommend, if you can find it online, there is someone roped in John Hurt to do the war speech at a convention, and he's on stage delivering the the, the Capaldi war speech. Oh, wow, um, I'd love to see that. It's very, it's a lot more reserved and a lot more just calm and, and but that gravelly, lovely hot chocolate voice that John Hurt has. <laughs> um, um it's it's really really fun to hear really really fun to hear um i I love hearing other doctors do do other doctors speeches it's it's yeah. always weird to hear you there's a few impressionists uh out there that have done it so i recommend a little little rabbit hole on youtube it's a it's a fun one to go down um but yeah, great picks, and uh, that that was bloody Twitter. So thank you to everyone who submitted questions. Uh, yeah, sorry thanks. that we didn't get around to all of them, um, but uh, yeah, great questions. Well, we're very, on very Twitter too, so they can send yes. them directly to us if they if they want to, and I'll do my best. Yes, wonderful. I, know I may Sweet. be opening a door, but put put <laughs> you up. You are. Our, put yes, up, put up, you've opened the up, floodgates now. <laughs> you know, put up our handles. You know. Um, 
Vanessa as yeah. well, you know. And well, yeah, Doctor Who Am I is in ours, you know. Yes, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm just, I'm new to the Twitterverse, so, you know. Right, okay. So I'm, I'm kind of, Welcome. Matthew's like the social media wizard. He's the millennial. <laughs> and I'm just kind of like, how do you use this? Okay. <laughs> you, um, basically what you do is you tweet something and then everyone shouts at you and then you run away. <laughs> That's how Twitter works for okay. me anyway. Um <laughs> Uh, so uh, we're, we're coming closer to the end of the show, um, but we do obviously have one feature left before we finish, um, and it's don't tell the others, but it's my it's my favourite. Um, it's the corridor of fame. Have you ever been limited by who you were before? One day I shall come back. Yes, I shall come back. Our lives are different. I have the right. Some people, small, beautiful events is what life is all about. compared to us, ten million years of absolute power. That's what it takes to make it really a big great decision, Lucas. Like a huge boulder dropped in a lake. But it was a childish dream that made you a doctor. You dreamt you could no more. So the Corridor of Fame, for anyone who doesn't know, is uh, basically a Hall of Fame for Doctor Who. So uh, our wonderful guests come on and they suggest uh, someone to 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 get their their portrait hung upon the the, the corridor um, that basically just heralds the possibly unsung heroes and sometimes the the very oftenly sung heroes of Doctor Who. Um, all of the doctors are in, and we've got a shed load of people in there now. It's getting quite crowded. Uh, we may need a second corridor. But um, Matthew, we'll we'll go to you first this time. Um, who would you like to submit to the corridor of fame? I put um, Grace, Doctor Grace Holloway, um, because she was a uh, um, she was a turning point for the companions. Mm -hmm. um, uh, she's like one of the first that says no I no I don't want to go you come with me you know she's she's a very strong character and mm -hmm. and and I, and I and also I know it's egotistical of me to put that because because I, I sort of wrote her but but she she um, she definitely is she definitely I feel like she's been slightly neglected because universal kept a hold of her for so long nobody yeah. could put her in a big finisher or anything like that yeah so I'd put uh, so I'd put Grace, because she's kind of like the secret yeah. prince. Well, D Daphne is is wonderful in the documentary as well. She is mm -hmm. she she lights up the screen every time she's on it. She's just yeah. so fun. She seems so fun to be around. Um, great. Yeah. What she's what's it like working with with Daphne? And I assume she's just just as fun as she seems in the documentary. So yeah, she that's Daphne. It's, she's just a joy. There was a lot more of her in the documentary because we just she yes she just has this energy like mm -hmm. it's this presence um we had to cut some of it out just because just the kill your darling thing which is not mm -hmm. a very good saying i suppose but like we just yeah. had to like take some of her out but um no she's just she's a joy that she yeah. is joy encapsulated in a person yeah um and and vanessa who who would you like um to to join daphne in there I would like Yiji So, um, Chang Li, the Asian child, to, yes. to join her in 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 that corridor. Um, not just because Matthew wrote uh, the Asian child, but I, you know, I'm I'm Asian American, Japanese American, and then you know you have Yiji, who's uh, Chinese Canadian, I guess, and well, Chinese know, San Francisco, Chinatown. 
I, yes, but the actor, he's Canadian. Oh, the actor, yes, 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 that's mm -hmm. So, you know, just, I, I like the choice of more Asian diversity in, in the show, or Asian yeah. actors, and I thought he was a fantastic character, and I really would have liked to have seen that version of the movie that had more of him in it. I think that was, yeah. that would have been quite interesting and a delight to see. Yeah, well, two wonderful picks. The, the, the Eighth Doctor's two faithful companions. I mean, he's not technically, he's technically the master's companion for most of it, but we'll, we'll count it. Yeah. There. And, and he, um, survives. he survives and they're both in there. Um, wonderful picks, very, very fitting picks. Um, and, and that, that brings us um, to the end of the show, which, which oh, is a no. shame because this is, this has been absolutely wonderful. I've, I've really, really enjoyed this. Um, but before we go, I do have one question for both of you. Um, it's a cruel question that everybody stumbles on. Um, and now I've got to be even crueler because I've got to ask someone first and I don't know w which position it's better to go in. Vanessa, we'll, we'll go for you first. Okay. Um, <laughs> in, a, <laughs> in a sentence, roughly. Sentence. Okay. Roughly, r very roughly in a sentence. Okay. What does Doctor Who mean to you i think the first thing that came to mind was like my childhood but it's also taken on this greater meaning of what this documentary journey has been mm -hmm. and in that it would be my friendship with matthew it would be meeting all these fans and being introduced to this family of people um so in in ways it's also I feel when I hear Doctor Who, it's it's this opportunity. It's like becoming a part of something, you mm -hmm. know. It's um, it's uh, and I guess it is this extended this family or this knit of people, this community that I've I'm becoming a part of, and mm -hmm. I'm getting to know more and more about. So it's it's an open door in many ways. And it goes deep, like to, back to that time when I was sitting on the couch with my dad watching this funny show. Yeah. So it's, it's yeah, an open door of, of people in a community. Beautifully answered. The coffee did wonders because yeah. that was a, a beautiful answer. More coffee. <laughs> and, <laughs> there's no more questions, so that's fine. Um, and uh, Matthew, you've got to follow it up now. So I, I'm, oh. I have to ask you the same question. What does Doctor Who mean to you? The, you know, the doctor embodies uh, hope and and uh, the ability to heal. Um, for me, that's those two things. You know, there's there's a warmth uh, to all the doctors um, and a practicality, um, but also there's an overriding hope. We know that he's going to turn up without being a corny hero who who. Uh, we know is going to win the day. The doctor, the doctor is going to, in some way, heal or help um, where, wherever he or she goes. Wonderful. Um, but that that was that was beautifully answered. And I I, I think uh, again to, to 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 delve more into that, I would very much recommend that people watch this wonderful documentary. I don't know if you've heard it, of it. It's called Doctor Who Am I. Um, but it was it was made by these wonderful people right here i've i've seen it um which obviously i've teased a bit of information i don't want to i don't want to spoil it for people because i want people to go and enjoy it themselves but i adored it and i laughed and i cried and it it really as you say it got to the heart of of what this mental weird worldwide doctor who family it is about and um I, I just i absolutely loved it and i'm very Thank very you. excited to watch it again um so i hope that everybody at home enjoys it also um and i mean i've i've, I've even done a bit of research here it's it's out in cinemas in the uk on the 27th of october so a cinema release which is very very exciting 
Um, yeah. And it's also available for pre-order on Blu-ray and DVD now, um, which I believe is due for release at the end of November. And I believe it's top of the Amazon charts as well, yes, which is yes. incredible. Well, that's it's amazing. Spent, it spent a time, you know, in the documentary section, it spent a time at number one right up there with the Beatles Get Back and with the Bowie movie. And now it's sort of, I follow it because I used to love following the pop charts. Yeah. Wonderful. And just before we go, I mean, uh, obviously we, we, we've plugged the film, um, but if there's anything yes, else yeah. that you want to plug and also if they, where people can find you on both on social media, uh, go ahead. This is this is your time to plug away. So. Well, uh, well, first of all, thank you very much for all those kind words. <clears throat> so glad you enjoyed the movie. It was like uh, we getting your email. We were both like, oh, it's so wonderful. So glad you loved it. Um, so social media, I guess Twitter. We're at at doc. Who am I? That's the documentary. Um, my Twitter. Me and my like two hundred and. 15 followers we're at i'm at v yule v y u i l l e and then matthew you are i am mjb jacobs um just look and put my name in and it's the one which is mjb jacobs yeah just look up at doc who am i and you'll find us you'll find (laughs) we're we're splashed Um, all over there and you're welcome i'll put it all in the description as well (laughs) i've just i've just gone past i've just gone past 2500 followers I'm like, I'm like going, oh, this is fun. Um, <laughs> and so and I, I, I'll reach, so I'll probably reach out to all your fans, ask them to follow me. Or, yes. Um, do you know what I mean? And then yeah. if, if they follow me, I'll, I'll keep following them. If they don't, then I'll stop. Yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> exactly. yeah, go and follow, go and follow both and, yeah. um, and flood them. Flood oh. them like, like You're Philip like, ah. Siegel flooded yes. Universal. Yes. Flood them. <laughs> Get the phone lines ringing off the hook. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, you've been listening to Who Knew a Doctor Who podcast. You can find us on Twitter at Who Knew DW. Uh, sorry, that's wrong. At Who Knew Podcast. And you can find me on Twitter at Josh Ryan Carr. Um, you can email us. No one ever has, but if you want to, Who Knew DW Pod at gmail.com. We're now on TikTok because I'm down with the kids. Um, and I'll be posting clips uh, from various podcasts. Um, and Tatum, I'm you like, do it from ours as well. I'll do TikTok. some. I'll do some TikTok clips of this. Cool. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I've find got to, something I've got really to get that. controversial that we said. <laughs> you know, it might be like back, back to the I'll fucking future. Might might get. In. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, your plans for the for the new Doctor Who. Yes. Um, may may reach tick, the world of TikTok, um, sure. but yeah, go and go and follow us on there at who uh, at who new podcast. I think it is. Uh, it'll be in the description if not. Um, if you want to support the podcast, you can support us on Patreon for as little as one pound a month, and you'll get early access to podcasts and some other little goodies and and uh, tidbits along the way. And you can buy merch as well. You can get discount off merch uh, by being on the Patreon, but you can get a little T-shirt with the Who Knew logo on if you so wish. Um, but Matthew, Vanessa, it has been an absolute pleasure uh, talking to you. Thank you for coming on. Um, it's been a blast. Thank, Thank you, you for having us. Thank you. Yes, and uh, we'll be back next week with another episode. And uh, thank you for listening. And I will see you all next time. Massive thank you to all of our patrons, and especially Cal King. If you want to become a patron, you can join for as low as one pound a month and get loads of benefits and support the pod. Check out the link in the description. Thanks for listening to Who Knew, a Doctor Who podcast. You can check us out wherever you get your podcasts and now on YouTube. Please subscribe and leave us a review wherever you can as it really helps us out. And a massive thanks to the Sononauts for lending their cover of the Doctor Who theme to be the theme for the podcast. (laughs) 